Hi, this is Karen of Divine Time Astrology, and Nishi Pandit and I are here today to talk about the full moon in Libra this month, which will happen uh, on March 21st, according to Greenwich, uh, a Greenwich time in the UK. Okay, so we're doing something a little different today, though. We're still going to be talking about Ayurveda because this is a very important time of year. Uh, it's very close to the spring equinox, the first day of spring. The full moon is actually the next day after the full, um, the first day of spring. So uh, Nishi will be bringing up uh, Ayurveda whenever it's appropriate. And we will go through each one of the signs. But uh, Nishi is also going to pull a card for each sign. So we're adding another layer something else, another way of looking at things through the cards, as well as the astrology. So, um, yes, we will go uh, Aries through Virgo. That'll be part one. And then Libra through Pisces will be part two. So it's going to be in two videos, as usual. So, hi, Nishi. Thank you for coming again today. Hi, Karen. Thanks for having me. Yes, so since this full moon in Libra is the day after the first day of spring, and we checked, it's not usual for the moon to be full on the first day of spring. That's right. Um, do you want to talk about a bit about the element and, you know, the Ayurveda implications of spring, for instance, um, before we begin with the signs? Sure. Sure, I think, you know, there's, there's several things to say about the seasonal shift. And it's always a time of change, astrologically as well as, you know, Ayurvedically. We take seasonal shifts very seriously because it's a time when the energies of nature are shifting. And when things are shifting, it can also be a time of imbalance. Because if you haven't been balanced before, then now there's going to be a new set of patterns to integrate with. And it's very easy to not adapt to that very quickly. You know, that's a time, typically we say in Ayurveda that seasonal changes are a time when vata tends to become imbalanced because there's a change. Uh, and then there's plus there is the time change too. That probably adds yeah, to... Yeah, the daylight savings time is not a help, you know. Yeah. <laughs> For those who are suffering daylight savings time, technically speaking, you know, the time is determined by the movement of the sun, you know, in the sky. So... Daylight savings time is not lined up with that process. So you have to subtract an hour, you know, like lunchtime, we would say is at noon because the sun is at the highest in the sky. So the digestive fire is burning strong. Hmm. Or in daylight savings time, that's really more like 1 p.m. <laughs> so you yeah. have to kind of, you know, if you want to get serious about balancing these things out, you would have to, you'd have to work it out that way. Hmm. Um, so regardless of daylight savings time, it can just be a time of change. Anytime there's change, vata goes up, you know, and if we meet that change readily, you know, say we have a healthy moon in our chart, and we can adapt to things, then vata goes down. It's like we've, we found the harmony with it, you know, mm. but when there's a change, that demand is there, you know, so there's stress and every season also has its characteristic doshic imbalance, you know, in the springtime, you know, the sun has entered Aries. That's what signifies spring. You know, it, it's the movement of the sun that signifies the season. So sun moves into Aries, it's an exaltation sign. So now the sun is at its strongest. The flowers are starting to bloom. Um, the dormancy of winter is starting to, to awaken. You know, the trees are greening. Mm -hmm. Fragrances are in the air again. Pollen is moving about. Na you know, nature is fertile. You know, it's ready to produce. And that's part of the energy of the sun, that creative life energy, you know. So spring is a time when there's a melting of the ice, you know, a melting of the cool. So it's a time when a kapha can become imbalanced in people because all of the kapha that's accumulated during the winter season, during that cold time, now is going to get melted in, you know, the exalted sun of spring. So it's all going to be flowing out. You know, so it can be a time when kapha gets aggravated, 
you know? And you'll notice people get congested, they sneeze, they have all kinds of, you know, kapha type allergies during this time. Do you want to explain briefly what kapha is for people listening just in case they don't know? Kapha is one of the three doshas. It's associated with the qualities of being heavy, smooth, round, cool, calm. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the, you know, vata also is a cool quality, but kapha is associated with earth and water elements in particular, you know, whereas vata can go cold or hot depending on what it combines with. Kapha is really the truly cold, the truly yin um, part of energy. You know, if you're talking about doshas, pitta is yang and kapha is yin and vata is like the chi that regulates those two polarities. So kapha is, you know, very stable, earthy, um, not very movable, thick. So the qualities of kapha in our body is like mucus, you know, lubrication. Kapha plays the role of lubricating everything in our body, making sure it moves smoothly, um, make sure we have substance, you know. Usually kapha people are larger. They have more development muscular and more fat tissue. They just have more substance, you know. Mm-hmm. The kapha is substance, and during this time, though all the substance we've accumulated to survive the cold of winter, you know, we've like gained buffer, you know, for the winter season. It just probably doesn't look like I did, but you know, some people did. <laughs> <laughs> that buffer starts to melt because it's warm now. It's time to cool off. You don't need all that extra extra weight, you know. So the so kapha is flowing, you know. So can I ask you a question then? Sure. My husband is very, very thin. Okay. It always has been. Sure. So now that spring is coming and the kapha is, well, I guess melting is, is what it sounds like you're saying. Yeah. How, how can I feed him to make sure that he's not going to get even skinnier because he's so dang skinny? Yeah. You know, people who are skinny don't have that much to worry about if they're not, you know, because they're not going to be have a lot of kapha to begin with, you know? So even the little bit of kapha they accumulate in the winter is like doesn't really add up to much. So they don't they don't get congested when spring comes around. They they you know they don't have that much mucus to begin with. <laughs> you don't really have to worry in a way. You can just feed him a diet that's you know appropriate for spring. And what is that? Well, spring is a warmer time, so it, it, it's good to have a diet that's cooling. You know. That's nourishing. Isn't it also the time of the year where the liver naturally wants to, um, what? It's the liver's time. That's true. Yeah, the liver's time. Yeah. Spring is associated in the Chinese system with the wood element, which is the element associated with the liver. You know? So mm-hmm. it's a time of regeneration, you know, and the liver produces the blood. The blood is like another symbol of the life force and the nourishment moving through us. You know, just like the, it's moving through the flowers and producing nectar. You know, this is a time of like the awakening of the life energy in the body. And so we so, eat bitters. We eat more bitters, right? It's a good time to go liver. green. I mean, you'll just look at what nature provides you during this time. Mm-hmm. And that's your basic clue, you know? Yeah. There's going to be fruit. <laughs> there's going to be more fruit. There's going to be more green. Nature is getting green. Nature's getting more colorful. There's flowers. You know, this is a time to eat more natural foods, you know, raw foods is great during this time, hydrating, cooling, nourishing diet. Whereas in winter, you might have needed to eat foods that were heavier, you know, in spring, you can start to lighten that up. I've been waiting all winter to be able to eat more salads without feeling cold. Exactly. Because, you know, I've been trying to eat more salads just for the for the benefits of the raw enzymes and stuff. That's but right. in the winter, there are days when I'm just like, no, I can't eat salad today. It's yeah, too cold. No, it gets really hard. You have to go yeah. for a warm soup or something usually. Yeah. So, but okay. springtime, time to lighten the diet, cool the diet, you know, enjoy the fruits of nature. So what did the cards say about this? You were going to pull a card also, I think, for the full moon. In That's Lincoln. right. So what I was going to say about the cards is that, you know, there's a, the cards are associated with days. In other words, every day there's a card for that day, you know. And so if we look at the full moon day, um, which is right on the, you know, right at the beginning of spring. So it's an inter- interesting full moon because it's like it's sort of heralding, you know, this new, this new season, which is also a bountiful season. You always say in our videos, um, 
that the full moon gives. Yeah. And so spring is a time when that energy is really strong. There's a lot being given, you know, the abundance of nature is, is awakening. So if we look at that day, you know, what is a card for that day of this full moon? It's a three of diamonds. Oh, that's so a three nice. of diamonds, you know, is a, is the card in tarot that corresponds to temperance. So there's going to be that just an overall quality, you know, we could say of temperance, needing to curtail things, needing to be attentive to the ways in which, you know, we need to apply discipline and, and so forth. Like spring is traditionally in Ayurveda considered a time of, for cleansing. Because the kapha is flowing, it's easy to remove the toxins because there's so much flow outward. So you can easily evacuate all your toxicity during this time. So temperance in that sense. Um, and the moon card, because, you know, every, every day has a spread associated with it. So the three of diamonds has a spread, a day spread, you know, birth spread. And the moon card for that is a seven of hearts. So because we're talking about the full moon, it's interesting to look at the moon card, you know, on this day. So that's a seven of hearts. And hearts corresponds to, you know, it's kind of a kapha, water element based suit. And it's really about, the, about fruit, you know. The spade is the tree and the heart is the fruit. So it's really an appropriate, an appropriate energy, you know, for the spring season. Yeah, um, especially because the full moon is in Libra, which is yeah. a Venus sign. Though fruit doesn't correspond to Venus, that corresponds to Jupiter. But still, it's a Venus sign. Taste. Venus rules yeah. taste and, and food in that sense. Um, nourishment. So, you know, and red, all the red suits in general represent nourishment, you know. So that's interesting. And then you have the moon itself is placed in the Venus card, you know, because like you said, moon is in Libra. And that card is a nine of clubs. So, you know, nine of clubs is a card of, of, of universal ideas, you know, universal perspectives. And a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, the moon is there, Mars is there. Uranus is there, the midheaven is there. All of those are in this card, the nine of clubs. So a lot of the energy of this full moon is actually kind of like a, a nine of clubs energy, you know, universality, you know, universal, you know, universal perspectives, the open expansion of the mind, you know. It's a K2 ruled card because it's a nine, you know, and clubs is air element in the mind. So a lot of, you know, opening of the mind, I think, and that's really could be very inspiring for people. So inspiration is running high right now for a springtime. Exalted sun, some nice stuff going on with the moon cards and whatnot. It's like, this is the time to really have a strong intention and, you know, capitalize on this, the thrust of nature, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so then... So then oh. I'll pull a card, you know, as we go through each sign, and that's going to be more like, you know, just be doing one card draws for each sign and seeing what, what the deck reveals. Yeah, that'll be really interesting. Okay, so let's go over to Aries. And for Aries, the Aries uh, rising sun or moon, the full moon is in the seventh house of partnerships and the public. And what's interesting is that in the Jaimini technique, when you have Venus moon combinations, it makes you popular with the public. You can interact with the public in a way that um, is more graceful. And there's, you get a better response from the public. So if you're in a job, for instance, where you work with the public, that's a good day for that. You'll have more energy for it. You'll be more easily connect with people. And then, of course, it's also a relationship house for Aries, um, rising sun or moon. And so with the full moon gives. So why don't you plan something that for that day? So it can be something small. It doesn't have to be a big thing. But where you spend time with your partner, if you have a partner, and, um, you know, enjoy the full moon because it's a, the moon is a connector planet. It's uh, described as being lovesick. And when it's full, you can get some satisfaction there in that desire to um, connect with somebody. Now, if you're single, it's like I say every month, 
<laughs> for every sign that has the full moon in the seventh, don't stay home on that day. Or if you're doing internet dating, then go, go online and connect with more people. So it's also a time to, to see, because uh, the moon is also about getting your personal needs met. And in a Venus sign, strictly speaking, um, it's not really the best sign for the moon because there's a conflict. The, the moon is about getting your own personal needs met, whereas Venus, which is ruling Libra, is about making sure that the relationship, that both people in the relationship are getting their needs met, that there's an even exchange of energy. So it's a good theme. It's something to think about on that day and to think about your relationship and yourself, but to, to emphasis the relationship more than your own, than yourself, than your personal needs. Now, unless you're in a relationship where it's always really unbalanced, meaning where the other person, it seems to be all about them, or it's always about you. Like say you're going through a crisis and you've been going through a crisis for a while and it seems like your partner has had to make a lot of um, compromises and to sacrifice a lot of things for you. And in that case, on this day, you can make an effort to put all that aside as much as possible and then just focus on the relationship itself. Okay, so what would you like to say about that, Nisha? You have a card for us? Yeah, let's draw a card. Let me shuffle. And let's see what we got. Huh. Ace of Spades. Hmm. Ace of Spades is the sun card in Tarot, so that's appropriate enough for Aries people who are experiencing the exalted sun during this time. Ace of spades. So basically I would say Aries people, what do you want to create? You know, what do you want to birth? And this is like a fertile time of year as it is. And the Ace of spades represents um, a lot of creative energy, you know, the beginning of something, the initiation of something, you know, it's the first card, you know, of the, first suit so this is a great time to start you know a new endeavor a new venture a new idea a new path a new anything you know if there's new something you can do, this is your moment you know since it's in the seventh the full moon so it would probably be re uh, related to relationship right that's right somehow in some way you could say that Maybe it's time for a renewal in relationships, or if it's not a healthy relationship, time for a new relationship, or, you know, definitely an energy of uh, birth, rebirth. Yeah. It's a nice theme. Okay, so we'll go on to Taurus. Okay, so for Taurus rising, sun or moon, the full moon is in the sixth house. Now, so that is um, appropriate for the spring too and for the Ayurveda stuff that Nishi was talking about. Um, the full moon there can get you started on a uh, adapting to the new season and adding things to your diet that you need to um, add to your diet to balance your particular um, body's temperament. And it's also, uh, it's about digestion there and illness. So if you have an illness of any kind, you can make some headway in uh, dealing with that illness. It's a good time to see um, a health practitioner, whether it's your regular doctor or someone like Nishi, who is an Ayurveda practitioner. It is, um, yeah, because it's the healing arts. Now, it's also any kind of obstacle, or it could be an inner enemy um, as well. And that could be, you know, your routines. Your routines could be such that they're set up in, in a way that is not really supporting you. And this is a great time to look at all that and figure out how you can make little tiny changes 
in your routines that add up to something a lot more supportive for you. So do you have something to add to that? What card do we have for Taurus, Rising, Sun, or Moon? Yep. Let's pull a card. And before I pull a card, I want to mention, because there's a the moon in the sixth, yeah. Taurus people in particular, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of Taurus people who aren't, you know, Kapha types, but there are a lot who are. And if you are one of those Kapha leaning types, cleanse, cleanse, cleanse with this, with this beginning of spring, you know, go for like a cleanse, uh, at home Panchakarma or a 14 day, you know, I, I really like, um, John Dewyard's Colorado cleanse. It's a 14 day at home sort of punch of karma hmm. built on those principles. So good time to cleanse fast, whatever people prefer. Um, and the card. Six of diamonds. Oh, how do you like that? It's a six. <laughs> it's a six, six of diamonds. Take care of that sixth house and that, you know, Venus. So this is a time when you could get a lot of benefits, a lot of fulfillment from um, doing a cleanse, just like I said, actually, because Venus is, you know, the sixth planet and Venus rules rejuvenation, regeneration. So this is a time to purify, rebalance and rejuvenate, you know, tap mm -hmm. into that Venusian energy it, right, because Taurus is ruled by Venus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Full moon is in Venus sign. Yeah, and so, Venus is aspecting the full moon. And they got well. Mars in Taurus, so that Mars is going to help burn toxins right now. It's really an, a very ideal scenario for Taurus ascendants to do a cleanse right now. They got Mars on their side to burn it. They got spring on their side to let it all flow. They got the full moon in the sixth house. Perfect. Six of diamonds. You're going to get a lot of concrete fulfillment from doing a cleanse right now. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying, at least. Right, and if you're not able to do like a full cleanse, just adding something like dandelion tea after your meals, um, having more fresh salads with like bitter greens in it. Yep. Eat more local. Eat more fresh. That'll balance as well. The intelligence yeah. of nature. If you eat seasonally and eat locally, you'll be in balance. Excellent. Okay, so you ready for Gemini? Go for it. For Gemini rising, sun or moon, the full moon is in the fifth house. Well, the fifth house is creativity, it's spiritual practice, it's the mind, it's children, and the full moon gives. So if you are working on something creative or you've been wanting to get to something creative, the full moon is actually the best time to begin something. It's not the new moon. The new moon is when you give something up. You're letting go of something, really, because um, you're finishing up the, the previous cycle. But the full moon is the best time to begin something. So uh, since it's in the house of creativity, and if you have children, you can do something creative with children. Um, it's the house of spiritual practice. And mantra, in particular, isn't it, Nishi, the fifth house? I believe is mantra. Mm -hmm. And what if you were to suggest a mantra just in general for people for uh, Gemini rising, what would it be? So I have be no idea. Moon related? I would, you could do mantra for the moon. You could do like Bija mantra for the moon. Okay. Um, it's also the house of the mind. So it's a, a, a fruitful time for studying. It could be spiritual. It could be anything that you're studying. It doesn't have to be something spiritual or something creative necessarily, but it is a good time to do something for your mind to further maybe something you've been studying. So for those of you who are students of astrology, it's a great time to get back into your studies if, if you've been too busy with other things. What would you like to say about that? What kind of card is, does Gemini have? Card.
three of hearts. So three of hearts, that's also temperance. You know, it's a red three, just like the birth card for this full moon, the birth card of this day, three of diamonds. So very close energy to what this moon is all about. Three of hearts is especially about finding like a new, new interest, you know, new passions, new love. Uh, it can indicate separations in relationships, but it also can indicate just um, moving away from, from something because you found something more attractive, because you found something new that captures your interest. You know? and, and it can also signal like the beginning of a new phase in a relationship, right? Like going, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so like going, beginning engaged, for instance. That's right. It's a we shift in a relationship, you know, moving away from how it was at one point into something new that's attractive, you know, but that represents a change. Hmm. So it'd, it'd be a good day to do something fun and creative together. Yeah, it would be a good day to do something fun and creative. It'd be a good day to simply consider, you know, what, what new attractions might have, you know, been arising in your life that you want to pursue. It's a good time to put energy into that. Great. Okay. So now on to our little, um, yes, unusual announcement thing. So if you're enjoying this video and you want more on Ayurveda astrology and the cards, please hit like and subscribe and you'll be sure to get this every month uh, when the full, when the moon is full. Okay, so now, Cancer rising, sun or moon. For Cancer rising, sun or moon, the full moon is in the fourth house. How perfect is that? Because the Cancer is the natural um, fourth house, and the moon rules Cancer. So, the full moon being in the fourth house is about your mother, it's your emotional happiness, your home, uh, real estate, fixed assets, vehicles, academic degrees, and pets. So if you've been wanting to get a new pet, this is a great time to get a new pet. And I actually know of some people who are actually are working on that. They're, they're looking into um, getting a new pet. So that would be a great day to do it. And... Also, you can stay home that day to just enjoy being and, 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 you know, being comfortable at home because the moon is about comforts as well. And just relaxing and being instead of doing all the time. And, you know, with Rahu there in the first house for Cancer Rising, you know, there's just a strong emphasis on self-development and growth etc. Um, this would maybe be a day to take a little bit of a rest <laughs> because it's it's been kind of intense, I think, for uh, cancer rising people. Let me see. So yeah, the fourth house is the house of emotional happiness and the moon has a lot to do with emotional happiness for sure. You know, it's aspected by Mars and Venus. So maybe you can talk about that a bit in terms of Ayurveda if, the, if Mars there is helping all that watery energy. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, a good thing because this is a time when the, the fire is, is turning up and all that's water and in ice is needing to be melted and evaporated, you know. So it's good right now to have Mars helping things out because what's needing to happen right now naturally is this burning up of things, you know. Right. So I think that that's really positive. Um, in terms of a card, three of spades. Hmm. Getting a lot of threes here. Interesting. Remember, the day card is a three, three of diamonds. Oh, right. And it corresponds. We had a three of hearts, and now we have a three of spades. Right. And three spades. corresponds to Mars, right? Three corresponds to Mars. So Which that's is, all nice. But the sun is ruled by it this time of year. That's right. Yeah. Because it's exalted in Aries, the Mars sign. 
So three of spades is strength, the strength card. And it's the opposite of the red threes. You know, the red threes are temperance, but the black threes are strength. So this shows that cancer, you know, for cancer ascendant, I'd say this is a time to really tap into your inner strength, you know, really let that come to the fore. Cancer might often appear to be a very quiet, sensitive, you know, homebody type, you know, on some level, but this is a time to be really strong and to let that strength come to the fore, you know. It's going to be required of, of them in some way to harness the energy of three of spades, you know, strength in oneself. So interesting. And emotional strength in particular. Exactly. Especially Rahu on the Ascendant, you know, you already know there, this is going to be a time when resilience is being tested. Right, right. And the, the full moon in the fourth house of emotional strength. Exactly. Yeah, that's really interesting. To so meditate on bound strength. See what comes from that. Okay. That's a good one. Okay, now for Oops. Leo rising people, sun and moon. The full moon is in the third house, the house of skills. Younger siblings, uh, your daily routine, mechanical ability and sales. So if you have a sales job, which, you know, salespeople would say we all are in sales <laughs> right. and all day long, right? We're always selling something, Ourse ourself or some other such thing. Um, the full moon there can really shed light on your skill development, the level of your skill development. And since it gives, there should be some a pleasure and some satisfaction uh, that comes with the development of skills. I mean, this is one of the things that, that humans in particular are made for, and that is using their arms and hands. And that's the, the nature of the third house rules those things. But we make tools, right? That's what we're known for. I mean, crows make tools too, and other animals do as well. But we really take it to a very high degree. Those opposable thumbs. Yes, I know. So um, there's a really strong emphasis on skills for the third house. It's also a communication house. And the moon is a planet that likes to connect to other people and to communicate, to encourage, to speak sweet words of encouragement. Uh, the moon wants to grow. The moon is the growth principle. So if you've been working on something or thinking about beginning to develop a new skill, this is a great time to start it, if at all possible. Perhaps uh, getting together with siblings, like younger siblings as well, um, engaging in some friendly competition, uh, working with your teammates at work, doing something pleasurable. Like it would be a good time to go out with everybody after work and just brainstorm and talk about things and, and enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the work you've been doing together and the progress you're making. So your turn, Nishi. Okay, Leo. Card is... Nine of diamonds. Make sure I got that right. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yeah, nine of diamonds, which is happens to be today's card, oh. March fourteenth. It also happens to be my birth card. And I'm also a Leo. Oh, how about that? How about that? What's the synchronicity there? Well, what's you're, you're What's my doing... advice to myself and all other Leos? Okay. <laughs> it's interesting what you mentioned about the skills. You know, I think, you know, Nine of Diamonds is a card of a card that corresponds to the fool. And it's a card that is about giving, you know, being being a being a sacrifice, you know, being the nourishment that others can receive, you know, being that source of nourishment for others, being that offering to others. That's the meaning of the Nine of Diamonds. It's like 
your life, your process is like the leaves falling from the tree that nourishes the soil. You're, you're here to nourish something else, you know? Um, so Leo should just keep that in mind, you know, that something about this time is about, you know, releasing something and, and being a source of nourishment, you know, for something outside of oneself. Mm. And maybe there'll be some skills or, 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 you know, qualities that a person has that will enable them to, you know, offer that, you know, for somebody else's benefit. You know, Nine of Diamonds is also a philanthropic card. It's, mm. it's really about, it's the one who gives, you know. Mm. So, it's a K2 ruled card, you know, nine. So it's about letting go. You know, it's really. spiritual growth too. Spiritual growth. It's also yeah. a card of spiritual growth. So keep all of that in mind with this full moon and this season. This might be a really auspicious time to focus on spirituality and, and your your deeper purpose, you know. Because the Leos also have something about that, you know, that's important to understand, which is that they're developing Aquarius, the ability to be a sacrifice, realizing that everything they do is significant to the degree that it's useful for other people. They are meant to be the sun, this sacrifice for others. Nine of Diamonds is, also has something of that quality in it. So Leo should take this time, you know, they're ruled by the sun, which is at its peak right now. And if look, they, and it's aspecting this, it's aspecting it too. Exactly. This is the time to tune into that sun energy and, and realize that function of the sun, that sacrifice, you know. The sacrifice that's nourishing. You know? So just oh, think about those things. That's really interesting, especially with the Saturn aspecting it as well, right? Yeah, the role yeah. of, of Aquarius and doing your duty. Right. You know, whatever exactly. you think that is. It could be a nice evolutionary time for our Leos. Okay. If we had more time, I would ask you personally what's going on with you <laughs> with uh -huh. that in that regard. Uh, but I, I know that because you're, you know, you're uh, involved with an ashram that you're probably engaged in that kind of thing kind of quite a bit already. Yeah, I'm always kind of in a nine of diamonds process, you know, because I'm a nine of diamonds. <laughs> but that, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so for me, it's just it'll probably be a time when, you know, something about all of that is made more potent, you know. Or are you taking on more responsibilities, perhaps? Yeah, or, or, or yeah. manifesting my skills at a new level, you know? It's like I'm doing more courses and things like that. It might be a time when I actually, you know... Do you, do you have a course? Do you, want, do you have a course you want to tell people about right now? I do. I did, I did my introduction to Ayurveda and astrology course. And I'm, today, actually, I'm going to make it available for, as a downloadable course for like $30 or something. Oh, really? Uh, okay, I'm got, I'm buying it. I'm going to get it. Cool. Yeah, oh, people can yeah. just listen to it. And I also made text supplements for each module. There's about, I can't remember how many modules, maybe eight modules or something. Wow. Uh, so it's good. I think people enjoy it. It's a good, it's, it's not meant to introduce people to Ayurveda and introduce them to astrology. It's good if you have some knowledge I'm more trying to describe the interrelationship between those two things so that people can learn how to do medical astrology, basically. Mm, um, so it's like an introduction to that. It's like an introduction to that. But I also do end up introducing a lot about astrology and Ayurveda at the same time, but it's not comprehensive in that regard. My okay. purpose is to show the interrelationship. So I recommend that course to people interested in, in, in medical astrology or any of those two sciences. Oh, great. Well, Just check I, my website and you'll see it under courses. You know, you can go get it from there. Okay. Well, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So now Virgo rising sun or moon. And for Virgo rising sun or moon, the full moon is in the critical second house. This is happens only once a year. And the second house is about getting your emotional needs met. It's about your family life, your wealth, your income, your, what you eat and drink, speech, teaching, close friends, advisors, and literally your teeth, <laughs> which is kind of funny too. Um, so not that I recommend that you go to the dentist on that day. 
I think if, especially if there's any kind of drilling or anything like that involved, you don't want to do that on a full moon. Right. Uh, In general, you don't want to get any surgeries on new moons or full moons. This is a really important principle, at least in Tibetan medicine it is. Oh, yeah. I I hear that in Western, traditional Western medicine too. Um, Back when they were doing it, when it was still based on the elements. That's right. Same thing. Um, So it it must have something to do with the blood, right? Because the blood is like everything's expanded. At least in Tibetan medicine, where it's described is that during the new and the full moon, the like life force is pervades the entire body because it moves according to the cycle of the 30 day lunar phases. So the life force is concentrated in certain points. And so you have to know where it is before you do surgery or puncture the skin in any way because you don't want to puncture where the life force is. But on new moons and full moons, it's throughout the whole body. So you can't get any kind of surgery during that time without really damaging your life force. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, so don't even get an acupuncture treatment on that. Don't even get acupuncture treatments on new moons or full moons. Absolutely. Nothing that will puncture the skin. Okay, but it would be good to have a meal that would honor the new season spring with all this stuff now you know you if you're just watching your own sign then you wouldn't have heard a lot of the stuff that we've been saying about that Um, but because it's a second house theme for virgo rising um then we'll reiterate it a bit now so that means having like bitter greens in your salads um Oh, gosh, it's leaving my mind right now. Dandelion tea, anything that helps to helps the liver to do its job. Yep, think green. That's all you need to do. Think green. Okay. That's the name of the season. That's why the, the Chinese associate the liver with the color green. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. This, is the, this is the wood element time of spring. That's the liver. That's the organ corresponds to it. And the color of that is green. Just look outside. It's getting greener and greener. That's what we need to eat right now. And you know, and that works so perfectly with the sign of Virgo too, which is the sign of purification, right? Exactly. And assimilation and um, there's three of them: purification, assimilation, elimination, elimination. Yeah. So that will just help everything get moving, and then the um, the emotional needs too, because the full moon gives. There should be some kind of satisfying emotional need that you get met during this time and if for some reason you're not getting your emotional needs met the full moon there can really shed light on why it could be that you're not speaking up enough and asking for what you want and saying no to what you don't want and or being able to negotiate with people and those are skills that can be learned everything is learnable and so that's a good time for that. And also maybe hanging out with good friends, you know, people who are truly friends for you, um, truly close to you. And or maybe just making contact with them would be a good time to do this. And of course, uh, you know, your wealth and your income. So taking stock of your wealth. And it's not necessarily money. It can just be other kinds of resources and how you can you know, be, you'll see everything that you have. And because the full moon gives, you'll be grateful for what you have. But at the same time, you'll also perhaps get ideas on how you can create some other streams of income. So you don't have just one stream of income. It's always good for everybody to have more than one, simply for obvious reasons. And uh, so take a good advantage of this time because it only happens once a year. Okay, so what do you want to say about that, Nishi? Do you have a card for us? Ace of Diamonds, wow. the moon card. No kidding? Okay, yeah. wow. Ace of Diamonds <laughs> corresponds to the moon. So this is the moon time. There you have it. You know, this is a good time to be lunar to really tune into the nourishment of the full moon and basically everything Karen said, you know, it's like, this is totally harmonized with that, you know, harmonize with this moon, be passive right now. You know, it's not a time to like get, get too intense about anything. 
It's a time to be more lunar, more passive, more more internalized. Yeah, we're step- your process is going to be happening. Wait, so, perfect sense with moon, moon in the second, and all of that, you know. So, what about diamonds in particular? I'm, if it's kind of um, slipping my mind, what diamonds mean exactly? Diamonds is earth element, you okay. know, which is appropriate enough for a Virgo, and diamonds are associated with very complex suit really um, it's associated with material things the concrete things that which we value um, diamonds are literally like the crystals of the earth you know that are forged by the fire under the surface of the earth so spades are a certain kind of fire you know but diamonds are different are born of it from another kind of fire you know the fire of the earth you know the deep fire um, and they, they produce these indestructible gems that fire does. The fire of the earth produces these crystals. They're really hard to break, you know, crystal. Think about a diamond, you know. The, the definition of a diamond is that it's really hard to cut. So diamonds are very strong, you know. They have a lot of strength of character, personality, um, earth element, substance, nourishment. Um, that's... And it corresponds to the second house so well because diamonds yeah. are associated with wealth. Yeah, wealth, prosperity. Yeah. You know. Well, that's really great. Okay. All the glitter and glam. <laughs> All the glitter and glam, right? <laughs> I do have to say that I'm even after even though I've been married now for 13 years, I never stop enjoying looking at my wedding ring. Seriously. And there are certain places where you it really stands out. Yeah. For some reason, grocery stores and barns. The lighting. And the lighting. It's so strange. It's like I just stand there and admire my ring. And my there you have it. Me along. What's that? There you have it. That's the diamond. It's a gem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, so that's the end of Aries to Virgo, part one. And now to go to Libra to Pisces, part two. The link is below. And we're talking about the full moon in Libra, which will be on March 21st.